The first course is offered by Andrew Wilkinson at the famous Rainbow Room in New York. He evokes the gilded age of the city with a spectacular shellfish extravaganza. Then from Houston, Todd Rogers presents a meat eater's entree, veal tenderloin au poivre with morel mushrooms and horseradish potatoes with truffle butter. Finally, from New Orleans, Doyle DeForest constructs a fancy dessert with a white chocolate tube filled with dark chocolate mousse and a hazelnut praline mixture. Andrew Wilkinson got interested in food early on. A native of Maine, he grew up on the lobster docks. After attending the CIA, he worked in Germany, New York, Boston, and Japan before coming to the Rainbow Room. Since this taping, he has returned to Boston. Here is a rainbow signature, shellfish extravaganza. Uh, shellfish extravaganza, the name, has a multi-dish uh, starting with a lot of ingredients that are on this table. And I'm going to start making a scallop ceviche that needs to marinate first uh, for about 15 minutes, a half an hour, in order to finish the dish. First, I'm going to start off with sea scallops. And the dish will include these ingredients. And uh, that's it. What we want to do is chop these scallops up. A nice fine dice. This is a quick marination dish. You don't want to marinate it too long. The marinade begins with fresh lime and orange juice. And the acid from the limes and the oranges will slightly cook the scallop so it's not, so it's actually a more pleasing texture. So it's not really a, a raw fish item. What's going to happen here is you're going to see that the scallops are going to start to turn white just as they would when they start to cook. The peppers, which is a fine dice, okay, are added. This is a Spanish dish by origin. And now, like I said, we want to have fresher flavors. But when this dish originated, it was for preservation, um, using the acid. Coarse chopped avocado. This is going to be a rough chop also, or a dice if you can get it. If the avocados mash on you a little bit, that's OK. This is just going to add another different texture to the dish. Chopped cilantro is added. But we incorporate in this shellfish extravaganza as many types of shellfish as we can get. And it will change throughout the year also, depending upon the seasons and what's available. black pepper, salt, Tabasco. While the scallops marinate, oysters and clams are shucked. Will be the oysters. Here at Rainbow Room, we don't use one type of oyster. We use three types of oysters. We have blue points. Blue points from, from New York. We have Malpex from New England and Canada. And we've got the Pemaquids from Maine. These oysters all have different uh, briny textures, different tastes. So we like to mix them up and show the customers and make sure we point out the, uh, that there's more than just one type of oyster. They all taste different depending upon the waters that they're from.
opening oysters, it's important that you cool the oysters down. In some slushy, slushy ice water, just before, so you relax the oysters. Next will be little neck clams. These are very easy to open. Again, what you want to do is put them in some slushy ice water to start. Then mussels. The mussels have been steamed and mixed with a remoulade, a chive remoulade sauce and just marinated, and these don't take too long to marinate. Uh, after you steam them in white wine, mix it with the remoulade sauce and the chopped chives, and they'll go back into their shells as a garnish for the extravaganza. Part of the dish will also be the shrimp, which have been poached. A three-tiered presentation starts with oysters set on crushed ice and seaweed. Oysters right around the perimeter, the little neck clams. A little garnish on top. We're using jumbo shrimp here. Jumbo pertaining to the size which are U15s. If you ever hear that term, U15, pertains to how many pieces per pound. So this is under 15 shrimp per pound. The lump crab meat goes into a radicchio cup. Lump crab is from Maryland. We use this because it's easy and we want people to have fun. One of the reasons come to Rainbow is to have fun. So you can use your fingers in Rainbow to pick up beautiful piece of lump crab. Next will be the marinated mussels. Save the shells, they make a great container. When we created this dish, we opened in 1934. And through the years, Rainbow has been set up with a great archives system of all the menus from the start. And for me, working as a chef in the Rainbow Room in such a historic place, and the owner, Joe Baum, who runs this place, we wanted to recreate what we did in 1934. The scallop ceviche will be ready now. You can see it did turn an opaque, whitish color. Lobster tail medallions and claw meat finish the extravaganza. These will be chilled, cut into the medallions. and your shellfish extravaganza. After his CIA training, Todd Rogers pretty much labored in the vineyards of the Ritz-Carlton organization. A young chef could do worse. At taping time, he was executive chef at the Houston operation. A large hotel can be constrictive, but Chef Rogers shows his stuff with veal tenderloin au poivre. One of the garnishes for the dish are thin, lattice-cut potato slices. The chef uses a mandolin for this. 
The slices are deep fried. Potatoes show up again as a side dish, mashed and flavored with horseradish. This is uh, two, two, pota two potatoes, two 90 count potatoes. About a quarter cup of milk, horseradish, whole butter, tablespoon, horseradish, about a teaspoon. You don't want it to be too hot, but it goes well with the au poivre. Okay, the au poivre, of course, is black pepper, covering. Fresh black pepper mill is the best way to go. I'm going to take a little crack black also. Okay, we're going to take a little morel oil made out of olive oil, dried morels, and then fuse them to get the flavor also. After the veal tenderloin is seared on all sides, it goes into a 350 degree oven for five to 10 minutes. The sauce includes chopped shallot, a white truffle and porcini mushroom paste, truffle butter, and fresh truffles. I don't like to chop the truffle up to where you can't identify it. It's nice to leave it rather chunky. And it makes for a nice bite when you bite into it. Fresh morel mushrooms also go into the sauce. Check your morel, some of the bigger ones, you know, you always have to check for any kind of dirt. Sometimes they have to be soaked. They're a very flavorful mushroom, but sometimes they also have uh, worms in them and so forth. But The sauce is made in the same pan the veal was cooked in. Okay, after you've cooked it to the temperature, we want to use the same pan to make our sauce. Deglaze with a little red wine. Saute our shallots in there. Also the fresh morels. And we'll add our veal gloss. A nice spoon of the truffle puree. The sauce will be finished with truffle butter and the fresh black truffle. Put our truffles in. Finish that with a little truffle butter. Swirl the butter. The horseradish mashed potatoes begin presentation. Blanched green beans that were warmed through in butter will follow.
I take the graffettes and arrange them off to the, over the beans. Nice slice of the veal tenderloin. Slices over each sauce. Take a little sprig of fresh herbs and your truffle. Doyle DeForest, a Louisiana native, began his pastry career at the world-class Windsor Court Hotel in New Orleans. There he worked under Shane Gorringe, and when the latter opened his own pastry shop, called Zoe's, Chef DeForest joined him. Now he has his own business, called Flower Power, and offers this white chocolate staircase. One of the elements of the dish is a praline cream that begins with seven ounces of melted milk chocolate and 13 ounces of a hazelnut almond paste. Next, to add praline paste, it's a praline hazelnut paste. Use the whip, because you want to whip some air into it, make it real light. Start off by mixing the two together. I'm going to slowly add your cream. Four ounces of heavy cream is gradually added. And you want to whip on medium high for about five minutes or, or so. While that's mixing, you want to take your tempered white chocolate. Take your mold. What you want to do, you want to do a, a thin coat of chocolate. When handling the tube, you want to be careful not to hold it in one place too long, otherwise you'll untemper the chocolate and it won't set. You want to clean up the edges. Then you want to take it and place it in room temp. That way once it's set, then it's going, to, it's going to pull away from the sides of the mold and it'll release. When it sets, basically take this and your mold will slide right out in the chocolate tube. Take the mold. Just a touch of chocolate on the base, and you want to stick it to the to the plate. Okay, the next step in this dessert, you take your cream. You want to put a thin layer of chocolate mousse. The dark chocolate mousse contains bittersweet chocolate, espresso coffee, separated eggs yolks and whites both beaten, rum, heavy cream, and sugar. This is the praline cream. We'll do another layer of the mousse. Then you want to come back with the praline. Mm -hmm. 
dark and white chocolate discs will garnish the tube. More discs are inserted into the tube. You want to heat your knife up just a bit to go into the side to place the disc. These are hazelnuts dipped in pulled sugar. Finally, caramel sauce. And there it is.